where you work. Okay. What's that? Yeah, I just turned it off. It was being taped. What the fuck do you want to know this for, man? You mean the special action group and we son? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, uh, you're retired from there now, but you're still doing, what, consulting work, right? Well, sure. All right. Now, look. Does the name Kali Jafar mean anything to you? Yeah. Well, who, who is that? He's the local guy, man. You know who he is. What, what do you mean, local guy? Yeah, come on. What does he have to do with? It's the Lockerbie man. Okay. That's what I... Now, when he came to Germany in 88, who met him? Who met him at the plane? You mean that prick Lovejoy? Dead? No shit. Is, uh... Well, you know this. Is he part of the structures? Is he oh, still... What the fuck, man? Come on, you know the shit. Is he still part of the structures? Yeah. All right, that's... You know, because nobody's been able to locate him. And a lot of people have been looking for him, so you guys must be hiding him somewhere. Yeah, that too. All right. Okay. Now, when he was taken back to get on a to get on a plane to leave the country, who took him through security? Oh, well, we did. Some of my fellows took him out. We took him on the plane and turned him over to Gannon. You mean Gannon was his keeper on the plane? That's right. No shit. Right, first class. That big motherfucker sitting right up there. هو مو عارف في مخدرات ولا بيشتغل بالمخدرات هم يضحكوا عليه حملوه مخدرات قدم مخدرات بألمانيا وحطوا له القرب اللي بألمانيا ومين بيروح بيموت لو عارف حاله رايح يموت ما بيعمل هيك and um, he was over the moon about it. He was just so pleased, and um, we sort of struck up quite a, a rap war in that short period of time. And then later, uh, another gentleman came in who I found out was um, Mr. Gallon. And after that, two other gentlemen came in, and they were um, Mr. O'Connor and Mr. Lorgia. Just from observation, it was obvious that they were traveling together. They they greeted each other um, with hugs and were much relieved when the last member arrived. Um, but I I was told by by a colleague who checked them in downstairs that uh, who had actually asked me if I would mind having them in the club that um, she had assumed that they were traveling together and therefore asked if they wanted to sit together and they had denied that they were actually traveling together they they didn't know each other and a few people and things and um, she was amazed by their attitude just thought they were playing around special forces major chuck mckee's hostage rescue mission becomes a suicide mission the moment he boards pan am 103 from the clipper lounge In the fields near Thunderbolt Church, there were a number of uh, bodies in the bogs, in the woods, and uh, around the field. I remember particularly um, the Dickett family. I remember uh, uh, McKee, um, uh, La Riviere, and a few other uh, names, all of which I learned later on when I went to assist the police with their inquiries to identify where I found who. The arc goes right round the crest of the hills, overlooking where the cockpit fell. There were a number of bodies which subsequently became of great interest to a lot of people. Charles McKee, a very brave man, an expert in counter-terrorism, was found just off on the ridge there. Gannon, Matthew Gannon, an intelligence officer. Ronald Larivier, another intelligence officer. Captain Curry, Special Forces who, according to his memorial, was killed in the line of duty. We've never found out exactly what that duty was. There were saints and there were sinners on that aircraft. There were also some very strange people whose backgrounds have never really been clarified. In particular, in the Thunder God area near the church, I identified several bodies 
amongst which were those of uh, McKee and La Riviere, I, I knew that McKee was absolutely correct because of the clothing which correlated closely with other reports and statements when we examined the matters later on the computers which were linked to London and Washington. So far as La Riviere was concerned, he was in an area where there were only two or three people and uh, his details correlated well with those on the computer. At the time, uh, I didn't know their names. Uh, I wasn't uh, very sure exactly who they were working for, but subsequently, of course, it turned out to be Major Charles McKee from the uh, Defense Intelligence Agency, and uh, Ron Larivier, and Matthew Gannon, and several other people that had loose connections with the intelligence uh, side of things. It's very strange, considering some of them were traveling together. At least one of the bodies, who should have been found in a location beside his colleagues, was found, in fact, in a totally different location beside or very close to the body of a person who has been the subject of intense investigation and speculation. One is forced to wonder what somebody from the front of the plane was doing landing beside somebody who was in the second last row of seats in the aircraft. Khalid Jafar in seat 53K at the very rear of the aircraft. Matthew Gannon in first class near where the bomb exploded. Their bodies are found a hundred yards from each other. The only passengers from opposite ends of the aircraft to be thus joined in death. Well, I filled early on uh, that the bomb, that, that the investigators believed the bomb had been taken onto the plane by uh, a U.S. Uh, officer who was seconded to military intelligence and the bomb had been planted on him uh, in Beirut. Later on when I started uh, doing the research in Zlokovy, it was puzzling me that the, the line was that there weren't any drugs on the airplane because it would seem that must be the first transatlantic flight for a long time not to have any drugs on it. And just asking around people who'd been involved in, in the investigation afterwards and uh, involved removing the bodies from the hillside uh, they, they were able to tell me specific passengers and what they had on them. And uh, one officer also told me how he had to get a farmer uh, passing with a tractor and trainer to help him take a suitcase full of what he presumed to be heroin uh, away from Pundagarth and down to uh, the Dexar factory where the luggage uh, was being stored once it was recovered from the area around. The farmer Jim Wilson lives in the farm facing Pundagarth Church. Still traumatized by all the death in his fields and by the past treatment by the press, he refuses to talk. Private Eye, however, had published an account. That terrible December, as bodies were still being found, Wilson told Pan Am 103 relatives, they too will not appear publicly, that he was there when the drugs were found. How soon after the police found the drugs, Americans rushed to the scene in an all-terrain...